Hi everybody, this is Camilla and this is the YouTube channel Translation Aids and if you want to, you're more than welcome to subscribe. We have 23 now, yay! Okay, this video will cover the installation of Subtitle Edit as well as showing you the settings that you need. So if you go to Google and type in Subtitle Edit, which I've spelled wrong there, Subtitle Edit, and I, I can see it here already. Just make sure that uh, the response you get should come from, you select the correct website. In this case, it's nicse.dk, and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this at this point in time. I changed it actually. Uh, now download under the subheading here, we can find the latest version made available to us, which is subtitle edit version 3.3.14. Just letting you know, if you have a Mac computer, unfortunately, subtitle edit is not compatible with that. There are ways around it, which I won't go into, but I do suggest that you look into that. Or alternatively, um, actually the best thing would be be to first speak to your country office before you even do anything um, that can handle that situation. Now I'll click on that and it takes you to a new screen. Just bear in mind that this screen actually has quite a few different downloads um, and even including some older versions. See here it says 3.3.12. Just make sure you, you are under the correct heading. So here, the button I need to press and you need to press is Subtitle Edit and the latest version. If you have a later version made available to you at another time, then of course press that one. But for now, it's this button. Click on that. And I get this little screen. I'll click on OK. And up pops up. Uh, this screen and I'll double click on this application and here we go yes okay I want mine in English if you want yours in another language just simply click on this little arrow and the Dropbox menu appears and uh, you might want to Swarmy for example or Svenska like that but um, I will have mine in English and then press OK and then we get the wizard click on next here we get the license agreement click on I accept the agreement and uh, after reading through all of this over a cup of coffee or two and you click next and here I will accept the default location click next Select components, leave them as they are. The default settings are fine. Click on next and click on next again. Select additional tasks, uh, create a desktop icon. That suits me fine for the current user only or for all users, that's up to you, whatever preference you have. Now we'll click on install and look at that, it's quite fast. It's a good idea to always keep your subtitle software updated because there are regular updates. There might be a bug fix or, or an improved function. And as you can see here, this particular version was created 23rd of February 2014. And they've even written here in this big long list what they have improved. And now we'll click on Next. Complete Subtitle Edit Setup Wizard. Click on the Launch Subtitle Edit box and then I'll Finish. And by the, I actually have installed this before, so if you haven't, this is what the screen will look like when it first opens up. It won't look like the screen I just had one second ago. And um, what we'll do here, see these little icons? Instead of going to the menu, Show, Hide, Waveform and Show, Hide Video, we have little buttons for them. So Show High Waveform wave comes under here, and then we'll click on the Show Hide Video. And all you do, if you just click on them once again, then they disappear. Okay, you can actually alter the size of the monitor screen. 
if you look carefully, my mouse button and your mouse button will also change if you slowly drag it over the edge between the monitor screen and the text field, you can actually, when you have your mouse button depressed, you can actually alter the size of it. And if you want a much larger screen, so but I prefer mine in the middle. And even with the waveform, I really can't imagine too many people wanting a much larger waveform than what it is. But just so that you know, this is how you alter it. When you drag your mouse button over the edge, the cursor changes into two arrows, one pointing up and one pointing down. And when, you're, when it, you drag your mouse over here, the, it changes into two arrows, one pointing to the right and one pointing to the left. And that's when you can click your mouse button, keep it down and drag it. Okay, now we need to go to the settings. This is really important. And uh, if you have an older version of Subtitle Edit, I will go to this menu here because you will not have it in the Options Settings menu. So let's first go to Tools. We'll scroll down to Minimum Display Time Between Subtitles and select that. Make sure, by default, your settings will not be on 80. I have already installed this before, and so my settings are left in the memory. So you need to manually adjust these. Minimum milliseconds between lines should be set to 80. And the frame rate info should be set to 25. And to save those settings, please always make sure you click on OK. And now we'll go to Options, Settings. And presto, up comes a little box. And under the General tab, we have the default frame rate again. Yeah, it's at 25. The default file encoding, you need to change that if you are translating into Swedish, change it to 1252 Western European. For any other languages, please double check with your country office because it will more than likely be at a different setting. I happen to know, for instance, that I, well, actually, I think Finland has it on Unicode UTF-8. But as I said, please double check just in case. The single line maximum length should be at 35. Maximum characters per second is 13. I'm just reading through these because not everybody's internet connections are the same. And if it's a slower connection, the clarity will be compromised and they will not see this very clearly. So that's why I'm reading through them. The minimum duration in milliseconds is 2000. The maximum duration in milliseconds is 6,999. Here, because I have the updated version, I have got this menu in the settings box, which you won't have if you don't have the latest version. So the minimum gap between subtitles in milliseconds is 80. Unbreak subtitles shorter than 34. Subtitle font is Tahoma. Subtitle font size is 10. Please do not change the size here. If you want to work with a larger text while you are working on your project when you are doing translations, there's another menu for that. But please leave these as they are. And even the colors, leave them at default. And these first four boxes in the right hand column should all be ticked. And then we'll move down to the menu item where it says allow edit of original subtitle please have that ticked as well as the prompt for delete lines have that ticked as well and time code mode uh, you will need to change that because i think by default it's on the other menu item it should be in hours minutes seconds and milliseconds if it isn't click on the little arrow and select it and the double clicking line in main window list view will please have it set to go to video pause and play pause means position and if it isn't just click on the arrow and select the correct one and the auto backup this is so important because it will be so frustrating and very time consuming for you if you don't have it set at 
the shortest interval. Auto backup should be on every minute. And then we'll click, uh, we won't click on OK yet. Haha, almost did. Now we'll go to the video player tab. And the video engine should be on VLC media player. And these three boxes should all be ticked. And now here, the subtitle preview font size, by default it's set to 10. But if you want to work with a much smaller or much, much larger text when you're working on your project so that you can see better, um, then you can just change it here. This is the only item where it's flexible. And this is not the size of the text that the reader will see when they are reading your subtitles when, when the product is finished. And these are here by default. They're handy, so we'll leave them as they are. Now, to save our changes, please make sure you click on OK. If you click on Cancel, it will actually not save any of those settings. Click on OK. And just so that you know, if you by any chance in the future ever open up another translator's translation file, for instance, an SRT file, then chances are that, um, especially if they are translating into another language, that their encoding will be different. So when you open up their file, it, this encoding will change automatically to whatever their encoding setting was placed on. And when that happens, you need to be mindful of always checking this, changing it back. But that's not enough. You actually need to either A, overwrite their file with your correct encoding. And to do that, you go to File and then Save. Or if you don't want to overwrite their file, but to save that file in another name so it keeps your encoding, then you just simply go to File and Save As. And um, that's pretty much it for now, except there is one other thing which was, is really good. Remember how in the Settings menu you had Auto Backup? saved to every minute or set to every minute, you go to File and if you lose your work or if you've done a mistake or if you've imported text or done anything where it has actually altered your translation to such a degree that it's so much easier for you to go back to an older version of your translated work, then this is the menu item you go to. It's File restore auto backup and what you do is you look at the time and the date um, so make sure if you've done your translation today you go to today's date and you can even open all these different versions and if you're happy with that version that you opened up then you file and save as so that you can overwrite that file that got messed up. I hope this has helped and we will see you soon or you will see me soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>